Hello Chips, this is Gav and welcome to another one of my videos. Today we're having a look at part 6 on the USS Lexington uh, CV2 build and it's a 1 in 700 scale aircraft carrier. Uh, I've got a fair bit done to it actually, uh, still no paint on it yet and uh, I've realised I'm going to have a, probably a serious problem with the paint. <laughs> Uh, not thinking ahead as always, uh, but thoroughly enjoying it. The PE is really ropey. I don't mean the PE from Edward, uh, just my application of it. Uh, PE in 1700 isn't easy to always do, and um, I'm really finding my, feeling my way with it. Uh, I tend to make it overly gluey, um, so I've got to really knuckle down and um, I'll go and watch some of my Japanese Maras uh, that are very keen on 1 in 700 ships uh, and I've got some, I follow some of them and I'm just going to have to take the time off to stop what I'm doing and watch some videos properly and uh, and just see how, if there are any things I can pick up there. I mean I'm applying it with uh, you know like a pin in a, in a wooden dowel um, I could go, I've got thinner wire than that and thinner pins so that might be a way to go as well for one in 700. Uh, I burn it off regularly, uh, you know, so it doesn't get too bulbous at the end uh, with glue. Uh, but even still, it's um, it's not going exactly to plan. Some of my folding could be better on the different gantries and that, which you'll see in a minute. Um, but uh, let's go down and take a look. It's not going to be a long video. This isn't, uh, according to my analyticals, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I'd have less interest filming this in a bus shelter uh, that's it's teeming down of rain outside and people are just standing under it to keep dry and oh look this bloke's got a, a USS Lexington let's listen to what he's got to say <laughs> it's not exactly popular I don't know why you guys don't like 1 in 700 scale ships but I love them uh, so uh, <laughs> keep building them and keep knocking them out uh, but for those that are interested, thank you very much. It's much appreciated. I know it's not for everybody, just like a lot of stuff I do. Um, I've got a, a good couple of books uh, coming at the moment. Uh, I've got the uh, only second-hand ones. I buy them off like World of Books and that for like three pound. And uh, I've got uh, the Battle of Tassafaronga uh, off uh, Guadalcanal. Anybody remember that one? And uh, I've got the Battle of Savo Island as well, also uh, down the slot in the Solomons. Uh, you know, around Guadalcanal and well, the Solomon's campaign on the naval side of it. Uh, very interesting. Uh, I also go and uh, obviously watch the unofficial history of the Pacific War podcast. Uh, love that uh, show, and and the, and the guys that do it have a whose names escape me right now. Do a, a fantastic job. I'll leave. I said I would do. As I'm building this, I'd leave a link each time to their channel uh, because they're on YouTube. Uh, a big chunk, I, I don't know how long they've been on YouTube for, so not all of, I imagine the podcast early stuff is on there, but uh, really enjoyable, I can stick it on, I can, whether I'm painting my figures, or building my models, and I, I really learn a lot, uh, I'd heard of Tassa Faronga, I'd heard of, which is why I bought the books, uh, I'd heard of uh, Salvo Island, uh, but again, you can't know everything, uh, and these guys go really into de in depth with it and then I thought right now I need to go and get a book or a couple of books you know I'll, I'll often buy a couple on the same subject just to get different viewpoints uh, and you know just sit there and read it at night and uh, chill out and and learn more on the subject so uh, anyway <laughs> so I'll throw that out there so yeah go and check out the unofficial Pacific War podcast, something like that. It'll be in the description anyway. Uh, it's really great. A couple of American lads uh, run it with some guests coming on as well. And uh, they really know this stuff. Uh, as I say, it's just their opinion. And it's not all, what you know, Yahoo. Um, sometimes some of these podcasts, you know, they can try and be overly funny or overly rah, rah, rah. Uh, I don't know if that is really a great description. <laughs> but they're not. They're just calm. They just talk about the... The meat and potatoes of the whatever part of the and, and they bounce around the Pacific War as well. It's not always they did. They are a lot of it's been around. There's so much to talk about about the Pacific War, uh, from, but and they don't just do the naval side. They do land, air, and sea. Uh, the, the, I think the last one was on the Battle of the Bismarck Sea. Is that right? 
um, which was more an aerial uh, bombardment of Japanese transports and stuff like that when it uh, I think I've got that right smashed head gets memory problems and things going in and out but uh, anyway I'm doing it again aren't I but go check those guys out please uh, if you're interested in your military history and uh, as I say a bit of humor in there but it's not it's not like a yeah I don't know some some of these chats can get just just get what not enough on the subject and too much laughter if that makes sense um, and, and I prefer just to, to know about you know what they're talking about so um, yeah go check those guys out and uh, thank you if you have stuck this far <laughs> uh, I'm just I'm saving you having to look at my my crappy model banking skills <laughs> so let's go down to the bench and take a look at the USS Lexington CV2 Right guys, thanks for joining me at the bench. We've got an aerial view of uh, the USS Lexington. I've got a stack of PE done on it at the moment. I said it before in my last update, it really, for the price of the, I think I paid about 22 quid for it. Yeah, I had to pay delivery uh, from a UK model. I think it was through Model Centre, I think. Uh, Dan, is it, is it in Dorset? Or well, Devon, I can't remember, but anyway. Uh, that was about 22 quid and I think it's it's plus the postage but it was it was well worth the the investment uh, it really does bring the model up now obviously the more skilled amongst you will make the PE look <laughs> look the part mine tends to be a bit of a glue bomb uh, it doesn't always sit in the right places now I must admit some of it uh, that the PE doesn't always form in the areas it's supposed to Again, if I knew more, I'd probably go clipping bits off plastic and 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 trying to make the plastic conform to the PE, if that makes sense. And I haven't, and it looks a bit rough in places. Uh, that's just, although I do make, you know, I'm an occasional modeler compared to a figure painter. It's only doing things like this that I'm going to get better at it. So you'll just have to forgive that. Um, so yeah this is our overhead view we've got obviously the mighty smokestacks which i think i had on before um, a real recognition feature of the class as you can see from the side um, right let's see if we can go down a bit right now i'll go to the bit that's upset me the most which i only thought about last night of all times Last night I stuck on uh, these railings. They're not brilliant. I'm not the railings themselves again, just my work. But I st I'm too scared to touch because they'll fall off. Now they're, they're fairly solid. Uh, now I put this stanchion on here, support stanchion as I'm calling it. The PE would ha the stanchion because of, as I told you on the last update, they snap off these these two back here. No problem at all. Sorry, that was my phone going off. Uh, but these guys just fell into about three pieces you didn't even have to touch them uh, so I've had to put my own on well I should have brought that out a bit farther I was a bit worried about not getting the the actual railings on not realizing that when I came to it the railings actually curve around the back of this and that that almost comes to the edge of the ship um, now on the edge here there will also be uh, two davits about here, oh, come on Gav, here and here are going to be two davits I'll be working on later on the week and um, uh, with the ship's cutter, two ship's cutters on. So one way or the other, and they would fit roughly, I'd try to leave the holes there for them and they, they fit roughly about there and somewhere around there and there because I filled all this, there was a bad seam, seam line. Uh, and I, I tried to fill that and uh, obviously gone over the holes there that they fit in and also they're going to have PE uh, I'll show you those in a second because I think I'm going to have to do something different with them uh, now my major faux pas is uh, Lexington at this time and this is her last her last uh, voyage if you can say it that way um, sadly is uh, the ship was overpainted blue and some people just paint it blue and that's it um, I'm gonna weather mine up a fair bit I'm gonna I'm gonna use hairspray or something and make it patchy because when you look at photographs 
and there were a lot of her taken from other ships when they were fighting the fires before they had to abandon ship. Uh, and in the, the run-up period to that time, this is actually quite, wherever it met the sea, it was actually quite patchy. You had the old grey underneath coming through in places with obviously bits like the the, the funnel and the, 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 the bridge structure and that that wasn't getting so much weathering. That was in better nick with the paint. Um, now the deck is painted a completely different colour. It's painted like a dark blue and they said, well, yeah, obviously it was fading in places well, obviously with the aircraft going up and down it and the sun on it but it was still a lot darker blue now I knew I was going to have to do some real hellish masking and what a lot of the lads will do is they cut them up into little small squares to go on these little ships to go in all the all the tight you know like nooks and crannies that's fine I can I can attempt <laughs> To, to cover with some, some wider tape maybe, go over the guns here and, 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 and all this type of thing. That's fine. But um, I'm going to have a heck of a game along here particularly. Now I've stuck railings on there. That I've also given it the 3D effect with the photo etch, which it would have had with plastic as well, but um, this is the photo etch version. Uh, there are hose reels behind which you can't really see, but there are hose reels, at least five or six of them, in these bays. And I'm expected to put blue paint <laughs> down there. So, again, uh, a newbie's, I suppose, mistake of realistically, I shouldn't have put any railings on, or even these hose reels and that, and painted all that deck area blue. Now, they do have you build these in in modules and you'll see people doing it I was watching a guy doing it on the Bismarck on the 1 in 200 he built his in modules but the problem I, I have with the modules are when I tried to do it on HMS Kent in 1 in 350 scale that's my modern type 23 Royal Navy uh, frigate um, when I put the modules down to the to the actual ship it's, itself that they didn't there were gaps all over the place, you know, and I couldn't fill them because I'd got all extra bits in, you know, so I couldn't get a smooth run of putting filler in. I did try and fill them in places, but it really looked rough, so I thought, no, I'm going to build them, you know, from, from the deck up type of thing. Uh, but yeah, that, and I know I could put debonder on and take these off. I'm not going to. I'm not going to go through that heartache because that took a fair old while with gaff skills getting all that on. And bending it and conforming it around different places. Uh, so uh, all I can do is is my best. I'll use my airbrush going into all the places I can get into um, along here. Um, there's no way I'm going to be able to. The only problem is there's no way I'm going to be able to stick. Um, I'm not going to be able to stick. At, at, tape down because I've got all my reels and stuff behind behind the actual you can just see them there actually better you know with all that that stuff there there's no way I'm going to get bits of tape in there so it is what it is you know unfortunately um, it's sport it a bit really uh, but you know it, I can only work around it uh, other faux pas I've had I do like to shout them out <laughs> Uh, these guys are obviously normally in plastic there's big holes there I didn't fill the holes up I just put extra glue in there and to be honest with you you put the the oars on separately and they cover up any holes uh, now there's I don't know if they must be slightly bigger than the originals and I've tried to leave a tiny bit of space and run out one ran out at this end, so she's gone straight over the ladder. I, nothing I can do about that. I could try to now and this one, which is supposed to have a space uh, further away, but the PE just sorry the glue the CA just grabbed it the minute it went on. Sometimes it's weird. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't. And I could put debonder down that, but try these are so thin and spindly. If I 
it's very soft PE this and if I, I just know I, um, I've actually got some spares at the moment I don't know where it's given me about five other five or six other rafts I don't know where they're supposed to go on the ship because uh, nothing actually says any more rafts um, but yeah that one grabbed straight away so she's sitting half a mil below the others oh hey ho <laughs> uh, the gantry here was an absolute pig's ear um, you can just see it bulges out there there's nothing I can do that's actually fairly solid if you try and push it in um, it'll it'll just break up I mean it, it's it's solid so I mean it, it's doing its job but and, and to be fair most of the time you aren't really going to see it um, things I've still got to do uh, I've got obviously safety barriers all across the tops of these these uh, the main guns here these don't look to have them where are we here you must for some reason they don't seem to bother about people falling falling into those ones um, this end I still haven't done any I'm, I'm, I have got some left because there's nothing actually in the I mean photo etch I don't believe that actually shows you that they're supposed to go on but they must do I would have thought well maybe not I don't know yet but if they do I'll have some uh, some some barriers to go on the top of those as well I've also got on this side still got to put my two main ships boats in and then there's some I think there's some barriers that go across here as well that side as well and there's where these these little bits of plastic are these would normally have like another plastic bit that runs down and they are just blocky so I, you leave those intact that one's pushed up a bit slightly you have to push it down uh, and then you sit just like these others uh, here you sit them on top and then they go down so I've got a couple of those to do down to there and here uh, and once that's done I don't think there's anything oh sorry yeah I've got to do the radar that's a nice that seems a nice bit of configuration there's a radar that goes on here and uh, then there's a mast that obviously comes up on on here as well so they've got to be done uh, all these by the way on the top here they're, they're very they don't you don't get a PE for these for some reason I suppose it's because they make them too tiny but these are the water cooled 30 calibers or 50 caliber uh, these are 5, 0.5s. I don't know. Uh, I think these are. Thir I can't remember if these are 30 or 50s. Um, but uh, all the PE apart, apart from that mast, the radar, uh, and as I say, a few barriers is done. Now you'll see the safety barrier around this lift. They gave you that. Uh, I was. I put it on just for the I, again before people start piling in oh Gav they wouldn't have had barriers up in wartime conditions or I, I don't know you know I love my ships but I'm not an expert on carrier operations uh, I put the barriers on it gave me the barriers told me where to put them and I've put them on um, so obviously they're not flying off when I'm doing this one I'm going to have some parked aircraft you get six of each whether I use them all or just put a couple of three on deck I'm definitely going to have one on this lift here coming up uh, I found some crewmen at Starling Models now they're only Royal Navy ones uh, so I was going to see what they were going to be like and could I convert a couple you get about 60 um, so I might buy myself either two I mean 60 is probably all I need really but I might buy two lots. I think they're about six quid, a, six quid or seven quid for for the the group. You only get four or five poses. Uh, they're only going to be tiny anyway. But I thought I might be able to, you know, mooch around with the poses, trying to move arms and stuff. Maybe make some little hats, because I think they've all got the Royal Navy hats on. But you know, at this scale, you're not going to see a lot, are you? But uh, I thought I'd have a couple of crewmen coming up on here. Um, but yeah, this this that's that's annoying. I, I was always knew I was going to have a right game trying to trying to to 
uh, spray this. I'm wondering if you guys remember I had a lot of trouble with the bow. Uh, the, the, for once, you know, again I was following the instructions but for once the instructions weren't right and these flared bits which I'm trying to show you here they just float there there's no pin you know there's no places to put them you just have to to and they ask you to put them on before you put the flight deck on which I did and at the time I kept thinking that flight deck is never going to hit that and it didn't I ended up with with um, a giant ski ramp it was like a, it was like HMS Hermes in the Falklands war so um as I said to you, I've said to you on that already. Sorry, my head's a bit mashed, so I'm trying to configure what I'm trying to talk to you. Uh, the uh, put that on last. Put your flight deck down, and then marry those up to it. But I do think if I was to do an aircraft carrier, or even and I've got obviously several ships to to do, I'm wondering if I would be being better uh, spraying the deck knowing that I'm going to get some glue you know the glue would be wiping some of the paint off but if I sprayed the deck I'd have the majority done wouldn't I um, that's a real shame that is because I'm going to have a, a right game I have thought whether I brush paint it now I've got lacquer paint for this so I'd have to try and find um, a bottle either in my own stash or or like you know my AK next gens or whatever and, and maybe brush paint the deck but I don't know how bad that will look I mean, it was going to look patchy anyway, and I am going to weather it with oils afterwards. Uh, yeah, it's um, as I say for the, for the guys that the guys that know <laughs> makes sense. You don't have to do ships, but people that model have an eye. Doesn't really matter what what that you know whether it's a model ship or a or an, or an aeroplane or a tank or a car. Um, you'll have a better idea than me, definitely. Um, as I say, I've probably I've probably backed myself into too many corners on this one really but hey ho you know I can just I'm not I'm not actually sometimes I get really defeated with stuff when it goes like that but I've not with these I've I've actually just thought no you know let's crack on with it I've, I've I love ships um naval or civilian I, I I always have done ever since I was a kid I mean I live right in the center of the UK so <laughs> don't get to see a lot of ships but um I I, I like that I just, I just, I've always enjoyed them, and uh, as I say, this the one in seven hundred scale financially and more important space-wise. It, um, it, I can, these are doable if that makes sense, and something like this that I just pick up and do every so often is 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 money well spent. You know, I get a load of enjoyment out of it. Um, not to say I'm not going to enjoy the one in forty-eight Starfighter when I I get round to that in a couple of weeks, but. Uh, um, but I'll still be building my ships along in the background. I just, I just really do enjoy them. Modern, uh, the old World War Two, Great War. Um, I don't mind. I, I really enjoy them because uh, you can always. There's so much you can go and read up on and learn about. Um. So yeah, are the barriers. I don't know if there were barriers. Were, I mean, who says health and safety wasn't around post the you know the, the early two thousands? Uh, these barriers. Uh, yeah, forward and aft, and the safety barrier around the the the, the lift there. Uh, you know, I, I take it in wartime they were still used to stop people falling off the end of the deck. I I don't know, um, but uh, I, I I just put them on as a point of interest. Really, they they were there, and I thought, well, we've paid for it. <laughs> Let's put them on. So uh, yeah. And of course we've got to do, let's just put it down, there we go, a wildcat's view of the, uh, of the Lexington. Um, yeah, I've got to do the air group still, so as I said to you, there's, there's six uh, of the three types, um, whether I use them all, I don't know, I, I don't, you can sometimes see aircraft carriers where obviously they're getting a the whole air group up and they're especially if they're fleet carriers they've got loads you know whether it's world war ii modern and they're literally you know the tails of the aircraft are hanging over the sides and everything uh, especially on the modern jets and that uh, to cram everything on you know i 
I, I, I personally on this one I'd like her to be maybe leaving you know be, I don't know before she refuels on Neosho Neo, the Neosho Neo, Neo, Neo uh, I don't know I, I, I don't know as I say if I've shot myself if they did have all these barriers up when they're in wartime conditions or if they just put them up when they're in harbour I, I don't know but it's, it's done now I, I mean they would be easy to remove but I don't want to I think they add a bit of a, just something else to the ship so uh, yeah so the air group I'm going to have one coming up on the uh, on the lift there this one I'll just have a couple of three crewmen maybe stood up um, when I look at I know that styling models also do bits of supplies and that uh, maybe I could get a, a little bomb trolley or something maybe coming up with them I don't know uh, and then have you know I'll definitely have each of the re aircraft represented I think just to say that they were all important to the Lexington so and they're actually if you look at the modern Lexington on, that's unfortunately at the bottom of the seabed uh, she, she was found recently in the last couple of years I believe and there was always a big talk on what colour the aircraft were. Some people saying, "Oh, they were the, they weren't the, they didn't have the red and white stripe and the meat on the tail and the meatball sign. They were they were the later, they painted them as as the later versions. But they they weren't. They were the the older style with a meatball in the in the in the star and the that's the red circle, and and the the, the flash on the tail with the red and white stripes, uh, and they, the the aircraft could have all. I mean, they're still almost yeah they've hit the floor and they're all smashed up to a degree but because she's so far down there isn't that much crustaceans over everything and you, you look at the aircraft just sat on the seabed and they're um they're like you, you, almost like you had them in a museum you know it's a uh, it's it's quite a thing to see it's just sad that obviously she's also the grave of the the brave guys that were were on board her so thank you very much. I know I've waffled, but I, I, it's something I, I well, I, yeah, I waffle, but I, I really get interested in in my uh, things like this. It's uh, I love the history. I like to. I, I think also when you do something like this, and you, you get wrapped up in it like I do, you you're paying tribute to the to the to the guys that that man them. You know, uh, a lot of these brave people didn't come back, and some of them survived the sinking of Lexington only to then die later on in the war on different ships or in the air so uh, the, the, when I build something they're all when it's a military thing like this it's it's always a tribute to the people uh, that that uh, crewed those ships um, uh, brave people so yeah uh, I'm, I've, I've got um, I have got some photo etch coming uh, I promised myself I'd get uh, for ages um, and that is uh, I've got the Type 21 frigate uh, for the uh, Royal Navy for the Falklands uh, war and I've bought the how long it takes I don't know but I've bought the photo etch set for that uh, I, I'm going to bite the bullet before they run out I'm going to bite the bullet and get HMS Invincible uh, which was our uh, small aircraft carrier, uh, along with Hermes, uh, that was in the uh, was in the Falklands War, and uh, Dragon. They re-released them all. Uh, the the Type Twenty Ones. I don't know if they didn't re release them or if they only released a few, but they were snapped up. Like I've got one, one that I managed to get off eBay, and I did get it for a decent price. But the Type Twenty One frigate, you just I love those ships, and you can't get them for love no money. Uh, the Type 42s, which I've got one of, I'm, I'm going to get another one at some stage between, well, probably in the summertime, just to keep in the stash um, because I've got a plan to, to make several of those in the different uh, different guises um, because, again, I, I like post-war Royal Navy ships particularly. So, uh, yeah, um, so you should see, hopefully, an HMS Invincible at, at, uh, at some stage. It'll be, I mean... It'll be interesting to see going alongside something like the the Lexington, uh, just size-wise comparisons. Uh, bearing in mind that Lexington is built on the the hull of a, a battle cruiser. Um, anyway, <laughs> I could go on forever. So thank you very much for stopping by. Uh, I 
may do one last update with what I class as all the work done before I put the primer on uh, or I might just go and, and primer her. Um, the plan is probably to paint her black and do the white um, you know the, the panel you know when you well, what they call it pre-shading that's the word I was after uh, get some pre-shading done on them all uh, to to um, on all the different panels and, and the deck and everything uh, but truly that deck's gonna have to think I'm gonna have to think up uh, this side yeah I know it's gonna be it's gonna be hell <laughs> trying to, trying to uh, mask all these uh, it's not gonna be easy I think it's gonna look quite messy to be honest with you um, it, but it it is what it is as they say um, but uh, yeah, if you if you're after th these, don't I've seen another one of these going from a model shop for around twenty two quid. Um, I do see them going for up to about thirty quid, but for twenty two quid and twenty odd quids worth of photo etch, you can have a really, you know, a really enjoyable uh, few months sticking these together. And as I say, you don't you can do them full hull as well. I just prefer mine um, in the water. Um, or at least uh, I'll do some in the water. I might do some full hull on those little breast stands as well. But uh, yeah. So coming up in the one in 700s, uh, when this is completed, I'm not sure which one. I've got obviously the mighty Bismarck to do. I'm just terrified. I've got the usual collie wobbles of uh, do I do I take that on yet with my skill set? Because I've got the full issue for that. Everything, wooden deck and everything. Um, but I've also got the tiny little uh, USS Ward. I've got the Type 42s and the Type 21 to do as well. Um, I've said to myself, when this is done, and I would like to finish HMS Kent, who's one in 350, who who needs very little done to her now. Um, but for the one in 700s, I'm not sure where I'll go yet. Um, it, it, I don't think it'll be Bismarck on the next one. I think I really need to sharpen up my skills on, on doing this photo etch and everything first. Um, but. Bismarck will be done this year definitely um, but it might be I'd like to do the type 21 but I've said to myself if the photo etch a photo etch took forever to come from China for the for the war oh, no not the war so the war took ages to come from China because she was all everything was already in with that one um, if the type 21 uh, which is HMS Antelope, but I mean you can more or less make her for any of those uh, it, that went down south. Uh, I will. I'm veering to doing the Type 21, and um, then doing Ward, and then having to go on Bismarck. But it, you know what I'm like. I float around. <laughs> pun not intended. Uh, I float around all over the place. Oh, one of the other things I wish I had done. I thought that the the bridge. Uh, structures uh, you can see all these these open areas well I thought that I w first of all I was going to paint them black inside then I thought oh no it's taking too much time I'll just put them stick them together uh, because like the whole bit you ain't going to see them you know that they're, they're going to be dark but quite often you can actually see <laughs> see through so maybe I should have done that in black but again we learn all the time don't we Gav so thanks for stopping by, taking a look. Uh, coming up next, there will be some figures probably. I'm hoping to get that flat figure up and and for a show and tell um, and other things. There's always something on the on the channel. So thanks for stopping by and taking a look, and we will catch each other very soon on another video.